dear friend. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to Victory Church. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church from Odessa, Texas. I say hello to you and thank you for watching and connecting. This is a beautiful evening here in Texas, 7 p.m. It is 8 p.m. in the East Coast and 5 p.m. in the West Coast. This is a beautiful evening of September 15th, 2020. Thank you for watching and connecting. The purpose of our broadcast is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is everything to us here in Victory Church. And today the topic will be, are you the problem? <laughs> I know it's kind of a tough question, but is it possible? Very well. The contact information of our church is on the screen. Info at bchurch.us is the email address. The address is 2400 West 81st Street in Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our phone number, 432-614-9798. Our website, vchurch.us. If you are watching through any of the platforms, please feel free to give us a thumbs up, a like, a love, write a comment. If you have a question, if you would like us to speak about a particular topic, please feel free to write it there. Our podcast keeps growing. So far, over 350 episodes. If you want to save data when you are on the go, when you are in your vehicle, you don't have to use videos. You realize that. It's with audios, you are using near 10% of the data. So subscribe to Giancarlo's podcast, and then you will save data in your program. Now, it is my privilege to introduce to you the most recent audiobook that is available in mygiancarlo.com. Nina Boyles becomes a lady hero in a terrific CIA story that I hope you will be interested in listening to. mygiancarlo.com is the website to go and download this audiobook. But if you are wondering about what is this all about... Here is the information. Victory Church is a church in Odessa, Texas. On Sundays at 10 a.m., we worship the Lord and everyone is invited. But during the night, we have programs like this. At 7 p.m., feel free to connect and watch. As a matter of fact, we are interested in improving our equipment and we have a fundraiser We are looking for $5,000 to replace old computers and some of, some of the old cameras. If you want to help us, go on your browser to vchurch.us forward slash give. What we are looking for is $5,000. Maybe you can help us. Some, some people say, I don't have much money. Any little help helps. If you prefer to do it through a text message, text 432-268. 0007 indicate the amount and the system will take you through that's right now as i said earlier the topic of today is are you the problem tuesday september 15 2020 from odessa texas thank you so much for watching and connecting what are we talking about Are you the problem? <laughs> you probably are thinking that I am mean. No, I'm not mean. I just, uh, I would like to discuss with you this possibility, you know. And uh, this is the reality. When, when you see all the complications in your life, have you ever thought that maybe you are the problem? Have you ever thought about it? Or you are absolutely convinced that you never did anything wrong. <laughs> you know, quite often we face complications in our lives and we just look at the problems and uh, actually uh, consider all the, all the angles. Maybe you do that. 
you see the situations around your life, perhaps with your money or maybe with your health, maybe with your relationships, your work, your business, your family. And when you see all these complications, have you ever thought that maybe you are the problem? Because it's possible. You realize that? The thing is, we don't, we don't want to accept it. We don't want to say, yeah, I'm the problem. No, it, it is always easier to blame somebody else. But today I want us to talk about it and, and see what exactly the, the scripture tells us about it. I want to share with you this passage of the book of Proverbs. It's the chapter 27 and verse 19. Listen to this. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just as you can see your own face reflected in water or in a mirror, so your heart reflects the kind of person you are. So basically, you are who you are. And you have to see that. You know, sometimes we, we don't um, really get the idea of uh, what is what people can see in us simply because our eyes are looking from inside out. So we see from, from where we are, you know, the camera of our eyes, the lenses are projecting in the brain. And so what we do is we see from here, from our head, all the way through outside. So we don't have the opportunity to see really what's going on the other way around, except if there is a mirror. Where, where you see a mirror, when you see a mirror, when you see yourself in the mirror, then you realize, oh, I didn't fix my hair. Oh, my, my, my shirt is messed up. My goodness, look at this. All this stuff that I have in my shirt. Look at my pants. <laughs> Correct? Only when you are in front of the mirror. This scripture says that actually what we, what we do, what we, the way that we behave, actually reflects what's in our hearts. So you are really who you are. The way that you behave, the way that you talk to people, is the way that you are. You know, sometimes we can pretend to be a different person. Sometimes when it's convenient, we will be very polite, very elegant, <laughs> very respectful. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We say sometimes to our superiors in the workplace, to the customer, to the person that somehow we want to please. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But once this moment passes, and then we come back to our normal interaction, <laughs> our normal ourselves, and then we are interacting with the people that we interact with, then we come back to ourselves. Now, we don't see that. You don't see your behavior. You don't see the expression in your face when you arrive to a place because you, you don't have a camera with, with you able to show you or mirrors. You just can't see it. When, when you are talking to people, you can't really understand the way that you are talking to people unless they were recording you. But the truth is, you are in your heart exactly who you are, and you are going to show it one way or other. And when you are thinking about all these complications around your life, you need to think for a moment, is it possible? That's the question. Is it possible that you are the problem? It's not necessarily that others are the problem. Because it's easy to blame somebody else. It's, 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 very, it's very easy. There is another scripture that I want to share with you. 
It's in Proverbs 7, 25. Don't let your heart lead you to an evil woman like that. Don't go where she wants to lead you. Don't go, is what the scripture says. Why is that? Well, because an evil woman, as you know, is going to, to take you to do bad things. You, you are aware of that, correct? Now, the truth is, even though she will ask you to do bad things, actually, it's your heart that is leading you in that direction. So you cannot say, it's her fault. You know, it's exactly like the, the story that we hear constantly in our churches, people saying, you know, the, the devil got me. You know, the evil was so bad there. You know, it was a temptation, a big temptation. The devil is attacking me. That's why I'm doing these bad things. Because that's the easiest way of washing our hands of the problem. We say, I didn't do anything, you know. And then is when we sing uh, Michael's, Michael Jackson's song, you know, Billie Jean. Toot, toot. I didn't do it. It's not my child. Because it's easier to, to blame somebody. Yeah, certainly there are bad people around us. It is a fact. There are individuals that they just love to do what is wrong. But that doesn't mean that it's their fault. Because after all, when, when we are being part of evil things, when we do what is wrong and we create problems, so in the midst of our difficulties, is it possible that maybe we are the problem, not them? Not because what's going on in the workplace or what's going on in your home, in your relationship with your spouse, with your parents. It's not that. The, the issue is, is way deeper than that, my friend. You know, it, it, it very, very clearly, let me put it one more time on the screen, the, the scripture, Proverbs 7.25, don't let your heart lead you to an evil woman like that, that kind of woman that is, is evil, you know? Let me ask you one question. Do you like what evil people do? Do you? Well, some people say, no, I don't. I disapprove what they do. But it's possible. It's possible. That's why Proverbs 24, verses 1 and 2 says, Don't be jealous of evil people. Have no desire to be around them. In their hearts, they plan to do evil. All they talk about is making trouble. Is, is what they talk about. And, and when you are around evil people and you hear what they are doing, what happened the last weekend, what they, what they have done the night before, or how are they handling businesses, uh, whether it's being... Uh, part of corruption or stealing or abusing customers or taking advantage of the company's benefits or anything, and you hear those things, is it possible that you are enjoying it and laughing at the stories? And you are probably wanting to do something like that, maybe? That's why the scripture says, don't be jealous of evil people, because we don't need to desire those kind of things. In fact, you know, when you are hanging out around those evil people, well, eventually you will start to learn those things. So again, in the midst of your tough difficulties, is it possible that maybe you are the problem? Question. Question mark. Ding. <laughs> is it possible, my friend? If that's the case, you need to start thinking about how to stop that lifestyle. And it's not easy. You know, changing is not easy. I, I am totally aware of that. 
And why I am so aware of that? Because I am a human being like you. I also have feelings. I also have emotions. And, uh, well, I was young once. I know the passions of life and what, what is what we feel when we are in our teenager years and our 20s and 30s and 40s. Now I am in my 50s. And still I know there are occasions when somehow my flesh and uh, wrong ideas can come to me. Perhaps desires in my heart are leading me to what is wrong. So is it possible that in the middle of those tough days, hard circumstances and difficulties that you are going through, is it possible that maybe you are the problem? <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to another scripture because this is really, really beautiful. Proverbs 22, 11. Listen to this. This is wonderful. It says, Love a pure heart in kind words, and the king will be your friend. You know, because what, what, what we really need is a change from inside. Love a pure heart. A pure heart, my friend. A pure heart and, and clean words are going to change everything for you. Everything. Everything. It's going to be totally, absolutely different for you. It, it's just a matter of uh, thinking, well, the issue is not outside. <laughs> you see that? The problem is not outside. The problem is not those people around me. The problem actually is me. <laughs> I am the problem. You realize that and then you say, you know, what I need is a real change. From inside out. That's why the scripture is encouraging us to love a pure heart and kind words. Because, you know, once our heart is changing, our words are going to be different. When your heart changes and your words change, the way that you talk to people, the way that you speak, your desires and everything that is within you. You see, there is a it's a change from inside out. Once that happens. This, 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 this scripture says, the king will be your friend. The king will be your friend. What is the meaning of that? Well, the meaning of that is that in any place, there is always someone of importance, whether it's a company owner, a business owner, or a potential new client, somebody with authority, somebody of importance, that will see you and you will find grace in his eyes or in her eyes. You know, people in, in positions of authority, whether because they are rich people that own companies or they are uh, simply managers for certain companies, somebody of importance, they are always paying attention to what people are doing. They do. People in authority, people with resources, they are always paying attention. And they pay close attention when they, when they see someone that knows how to speak, knows how to say things the right way. But it's not just the talk, you know. You get to know this person and you see that what, what really is happening is this person has a pure heart. It is not just pretending. Because that is exactly the, the, the origin of all those problems. When we are pretending. You know, when, when the bad desire is in our hearts, we can pretend. We can put the mask and, and just pretend to be a, a, a clean person. When, whenever it's convenient, we're going to say, no, I don't like those things. You know, I'm against these things. You know, just to present a, a nice profile to wherever or to whomever is convenient, you see? 
But when, when you really change from inside out, when, when you allow God to help you to change, and you let the, the purity of God uh, and His Holy Spirit transform you from inside out, things are going to be different for you. Your, your heart is going to start having pure desires. And your mouth is going to be talking kind words. Then the king, the person in authority, somebody of importance will see you. And, and this person will say, I would like us to be friends. And they invite you to, to go to places and spend time together and do things together. Because someone in importance wants to have clean friends. You know, imagine those, uh, those that are doing bad things. You know, whether it's selling drugs or being part of corruption, anyone that is stealing or doing any kind of bad thing. Do you think that they want to hang out with someone with a pure heart and kind words? <laughs> no. No, they don't. They actually want to have People like them all the time. But you see, when you allow God to change you from inside out, slowly your, your desires are going to, to change. Your, your mouth is going to be talking kind words. You are going to behave in a different way. People of importance will say, I would like us to be friends. I, w I want you to come to my home. I want you to, to do things together. I want to go with you places, to a restaurant, to a family function. I want you to come and join us here for this get-together because they feel comfortable that you speak kind words because you have a pure heart. You see? That will open doors for you. It is going to transform your life because you never know who this person is of importance can take you to a place where you are going to be promoted. You're going to get new customers. You're going to get a new job. Or simply you are going to make new friends. Good friends. It's always good to make new friends. You see? That's important to see. You know what? The Lord, the Lord Jesus in John chapter 15 verse 5 says, Separated from me, you won't be able to do anything. No one thing, my friend. No one thing are we able to do without the Lord God. We won't. So in the middle of any kind of difficulties, we need to ask ourselves, is it possible that maybe I am the problem? Because by losing a job again and again and again and again, or being dumped by another person again and again and again, or destroying relationships, what about jumping from one church to the other and then to the other, to the other, to the other, and suddenly you know all the churches in town? Is it possible that you are the problem? That's what we are talking today. And you know what the Lord says. He says, separated from me, you won't be able to do anything. Maybe that is the problem. That, that Maybe you are the kind of person that knows about God, knows the Lord Jesus, but, but you are not attached to him. Like he who is the true vine and you are the branch. You should be the branch. You know, imagine like my fingers. My fingers are not independent. You know, my fingers are, are attached to my, to my hand. <laughs> they are part of my body. Wherever I go, my fingers come. They don't say, I want to stay here today. You can go home. <laughs> you know, my fingers, they don't make their own decisions. They come wherever I say we go. That is us in reference to the Lord Jesus. We will go wherever He says we need to go. We will do whatever He says we need to do. 
we will be the, the way that he, whatever way he says we should be. Separated from me, we, we won't be able to do anything. And that takes us to another scripture. Romans chapter, oh, no, 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 forgive me. I, I hit the wrong, the wrong key here. This is the one, I'm sorry. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that's the true scripture. If you openly say, Jesus is my Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from death, you will be saved. This is the other scripture I wanted to share with you. Because if you are thinking, how can you be attached to the true vine? How can you restart? How do you do that? You know, sometimes people say, what, what is exactly what you have that makes you special? What is that thing that you have that makes, makes you different? I want to know. And sometimes they hang out with other Christians and, and they say, what is what they have that I don't have? What is that thing? It's just by going to that building and singing those songs and just being with them, that changes you? That's the way to get attached to the true vine? Is that it? And you know what? The answer is no. It's, it's through faith. 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 You know, the faith that comes from God comes precisely when, when you hear the preaching of the Word of God, like right now. You know, when I am talking to you, and I'm speaking to you from my heart, because I want your heart to understand what I'm saying. When I am reading the scripture and quoting the words of the Lord Jesus, I am preaching to you. I'm reaching out to you. I'm speaking God's word. Well, faith comes by hearing God's word. So that faith that comes to you, if you embrace that faith and you say, I want more, I want more, then the question will come up. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? You know, without faith... We, we can't believe that. But with faith, everything is possible. You know what else the scripture says? Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. But with faith, if you have faith as little as a seed of mustard, you can move a mountain of doubts. You can be absolutely different. Your life will be absolutely different just by Believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for you, and He He came back to life. The Lord raised Him from death, the Lord God. You believe that? You are a new creation. You are my brother and my sister in Jesus Christ. That is all that is required to believe, and that is the beginning of everything. It's just the beginning. But if you are wondering, okay, and what's next? Well, here with us in Victory Church, tomorrow, September 16th, Wednesday at 7 p.m. in Texas, we will be broadcasting another program like this. But in your personal life, what's next? Once you are accepted by God and by faith, you believe in the Lord Jesus. Now the next step is to get baptized. You need to go to a church, a local church, and talk to the pastor and say, Pastor, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. I belong to Him now. I need to be baptized. And teach me now the Word. I want to learn the Word of God. That is the next step, my friend. I hope that you will be connecting here with us tomorrow. And one day, maybe I'll see you here at Victory Church. Now, in the meantime, I want to remind you one more time about our fundraiser. If you can help us to promote these messages and in improve the quality of our broadcasts, please do it. On your browser, go to vchurch.us forward slash give or text 432-268-0007. We are looking for $5,000 to buy new equipment. Finally, a new reminder of our newest audiobook, Yorktown. This is a terrific CIA story 
you can get it in mygiancarlo.com and I hope that you will be able to do it. Thank you for watching Victory Church. Please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.